Hello everybody, it's Stephen and Walter here for another episode of So Chatty, and today we're going to continue on with our series of I, Stephen, make a shirt. Maybe. We'll see how we get. Now last week we we did the cutting in that. We'll come back to this in a minute, but first some preliminary things. Do I have anything to show you? Well, there's sort of something here on the wall behind me. It's in pieces. I'm going to talk more about that probably on Stephen and Walter Live, and I will definitely talk more about it. Uh, come next week on Idiot Quilter. Does Walter have anything to show us? Nope. Okay, so keep your clothes on. All right. Now, I wanted to explain not just the camera setup, but we have a brand new microphone system. If you remember last week, I had Yeti microphones in the shot sitting over there. Well, they're not there anymore, although you do see my camera stand. We'll come to that. Um, we're wearing wireless microphones that I just got from Amazon. They weren't terribly expensive. I've been experimenting with them. They seem to work fine. They're supposed to last up to six hours. This video will not be six hours long, okay? Uh, but as you can see, I am not even looking at you right now because there's a camera up above us over my cupboard space looking down for this. And then we will switch the camera over to the sewing at times. So... We're not making eye contact with you, basically, because I'm forgetting to look up here at the camera all the time. But And that will continue. But what's more important than looking at us is looking at what, what we have down here and what we'll have on the sewing machine. So before we begin, a couple of other announcements. Sewing with Stephanie and Stephen, Wednesdays, 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Be there, be square. Links in the show notes. Okay, we know that. The fall retreat, it has still have some spots left, not a lot, but I still have a few. So if you've still been sitting on the fence and you want to come, now's the time to send me your name first and last and uh, your email address. If it's different from the one you send that information to me and I will get you on to the list for that. And also a reminder to those of you that have already registered, I sent out an email this morning uh, reminding you that the cutoff for sending me a picture is monday night i'll go i won't check it till tuesday morning my time but one picture only of a fantastic creation that you're really proud of no explanation is necessary but i do need your first and last name with that as well and that's for the show and share slideshow that will be happening during the retreat as well so that is due by the end of Monday, this coming Monday, October the 14th. I have to have some time to put the slideshow together. Okay, and remember, one picture only. I've already had a couple of you try to slip in a couple. No, 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 no. Pick the one you want me to show and pick one only, please. Okay. Um, and just a reminder, Russ of Quilt Meets World is having a shenanigans sew day on Sunday, this Sunday. I believe it starts at 8.30, and the link is in his show notes of his vlog, which just happened this past Wednesday. And those of you that are on his mailing list, I think you've already got the link for that as well. So, yeah, lots of things coming up. And Stephen and Walter Live will be on Sunday, but it is Easter Sunday. Not Easter. It's Thanksgiving Sunday here in Canada, and we're having our my family here for dinner that night. I hope you're tender and juicy. Um... It's just a other alternative to eating turkey. And so we're going to be on at 3 p.m. Eastern Time instead of 4 p.m. Okay. Sorry about the time shift, but we need some time to get ready for the hordes as they come down to gobble up everything that we have to provide. All right. Enough of announcements. Let's talk about what we're doing today. Last week, we cut out Walter explained the pattern to you and the little markings, and to me as well, uh, what the different symbols on the patterns mean and stuff like that. And we laid out the fabric and we cut out all our pieces and you can see them all here right now. Today, we're going to sew the button band. First of all, we may do something else later on. It's going to see how long it takes me with the button band. So explain to the people, what's a button band? Button band is the, if you have a shirt, it's the shirt part that holds your buttons on. One side of the, the left side of your, left side of man's shirt has the buttonholes on it. And the right side of the uh, man's shirt will have the buttons on it. And this, this uh, band is interfaced and sewn down. 
Okay, so that's what we're going to do today. Um, so basically what he has to do today is he has to prepare the button band by uh, putting in the interfacing on the band and, uh, and uh, sewing it down on either side. Okay, sounds really hard. So what do we need out of these pieces? Okay, so we don't need the yolks. The yolks are the parts that are the top of the shirt. We don't need the sleeve. Sleeve's one of the last things you put in. And uh, we don't need the collar pieces. And we do not need the back. Okay. So we'll put those all over in that pile there. In this stage. So now... And we don't need the pocket, I guess, at this point. Uh, not at this sec section. But uh, now what we have here is uh, he has two pieces of front. There's only one piece for the pattern for the uh, front, right? And you cut out two pieces reversed, one one going one way and one going the other way, so that you've got two pieces that you can use for the front and left, front right and left parts of your shirt. So you'll have two pieces that you can use for either side of these. Okay. So where's the button band? The button band is actually, um, I've attached, this came as a separate piece. Um, you can do it separate, but then you have to show, sew it to the front of your shirt. But uh, I've chosen to paste the button band down the front of the uh, uh, front piece of the shirt so I'd, I can avoid having to sew it on. So what he means is on the pattern, he's made it the, the panel and the button band, which would be two separate pieces usually, he's made it all into one. So when we cut it out, the button band is already included mm -hmm. on this pattern piece. Now, by doing this, attaching this, I had to put it in, in with a three, the seams are three eighths of an inch. So I had to put the uh, button band in uh, three eighths of an inch to make up for that uh, uh, seam allowance. But actually what's nice about it is the button band all flows as one piece. There's no extra seam on this, on the front of the shirt. You would end up having an extra seam if uh, I hadn't done that. Okay, so what are we doing now? Okay, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut out and you're gonna, we're gonna take these two pieces apart. There's two pieces here. So you're taking the pins out. I'm taking the pins out of the pattern. So we're gonna release the two pieces. So we use those pins to hold the pattern down to the fabric when I was cutting it and for reference sake we left them pinned together so I wouldn't get pieces mixed up. And the fabric was uh, folded double when we cut these two pieces out so that way you'll have the two pieces the right way. So you'll have one piece for this side of the shirt and one piece for this side of the shirt. Now is there a button band on both of those pieces? Yes there is because there's one for your buttons on one side, and the other one is for your buttonholes. Okay. Okay. So I'll get Steve started. What I've decided we should do is I'm going to get Steve started uh, off camera uh, on starting the button band on this piece, and he'll sew this up and get it done. And then we'll go over doing the second piece uh, to show you uh, the process. That way he's familiar with doing the process. Okay. So we'll be back shortly. Okay, one thing we didn't show you was our thread selection. So Walter's going to expre explain how we pick the thread we're going to use for this shirt. Well, this shirt has multi-colors on it. Um, as you can see on uh, the, if I fold this over, it has multi-colors on it. And I like to pick a, a thread color that somewhat blends into the shirt uh, is a little bit more discreetly. Well, you're, it's hard to do because you pick one color and one, cho one color shows up on a spot and the other color doesn't. So I uh, did. Uh, I did several colors here. You'll see, and we're gonna pick the. We have picked the outer color on here because it, even though it shows up on the lighter colors, it's more discreet on the darker colors. And so. it's also a special name Walter gave this color. I called it Pussy Purple. And why did you call it Pussy Purple? Because the shirt I'm doing has uh, has cats on it. And uh, upstairs, and I'm using this color for the uh, cat shirt. So that's why I call it that. 
But anyway, um, I tried some other ones. I tried a couple of grays. I tried another a lighter purple, and I tried a couple of different blue colors. And this is the color we ended up choosing. So um, the color that Steve has on his machine is a darker purple. But I also chose tried to do a lighter purple. Um, and then I had two shades of blue and two shades of, of gray. All those both Not shades. Of, oh yeah, all, all the well, of course both grays are kind of the same. But anyway, um, I it just ended up that we chose that. Sometimes is it's best to do a sample when you're doing this because um, you may look at the shirt and think, oh, I, it, blue's going to work really well or something like that. And then as you're uh, sewing different uh, different uh, colors on, then. Uh, uh, you may end up with a completely different color than you thought you would on the shirt um, because you don't really know what the color will look like until you actually sew it onto the shirt. And that's not unlike when you're quilting a quilt and you're picking your quilting thread as well. The same thing happens. So, you know, it's your personal preference. It's your personal taste, what you think looks best. And as Walter said, I said to him when he's picking the threads, well, do we want to see the stitching line on the, on these? And, you're going to see it, but it's just a question of how much you want to see it. Right. Um, you know, in my case, I don't know how straight I'm going to be able to sew, so it would probably be better for me to have a color Yeah, because uh, you'll see the stitching all the way down the sides of each of the button bands. You're going to see it top stitch your collar. You're going to have top stitching on your lapels and on your back and on your side seams. So you're going to see that thread all over the place on your shirt. Okay, anything else before you show me the how to do this and then we show everybody else? No, we, we can start doing the first part panel, get you working on that, and then we'll come back and have them do the second panel. Oh my God. Well, we'll see how that works out. Okay, so step one is to put the uh, 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 front of your shirt, um, what do you call it, uh, right side down, right, on the table, and you have the button band facing you. Right, so I am asking Steve now to draw a three-eighth inch line all the way down the front of the shirt. It has to be doesn't have to be super dark, but it has to be light, uh, visible for you to okay, use so it as I'm a going guide. To draw three-eighths of a line down the center of the shirt. No, no, down the front of the button band. Oh, okay. So uh, this is the edge. Yeah, around down, down from the three-eighths of an inch from the edge of the button. Band. I knew what he was talking about. Mm -hmm. I just was being funny. Trying to be funny here. Okay. Three-eighths of an inch. For those of you who don't know what three-eighths of an inch is, that's one less than half an inch. <laughs> one, uh, one, an eighth less than half an inch. So marking that. Getting that lined up. Okay. Three eighths of an inch. Hmm. Yeah, you went a little off when you did your little I see slash. that. Oh, holy shit. <laughs> no, wait. Maybe we're not cut straight on this. That's edge. possible. Right? There. Okay. Okay. That looks pretty good. All right. If you're a real pro at this, you can approximate it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> obviously I'm not. Okay. So now we have to go over to what? The pressing mat? You have to go to the pressing station. Okay. So we're going to switch the camera around for that. Okay, so we've switched camera positions, and this is my pressing mat. I'm sorry I'm not getting the whole piece in, but you'll get the idea from what's here. So what Walter told me to do off camera, along that 3 8 inch of a line on the edge of the panel, I need to take a piece of steam seam, which I pre-cut these pieces last week. And then no, we'll no, no, that's, that's not steam seam. That's Pellon SF101 on interfacing. It's interfacing. In your face. Interface. Yeah, yeah. And these are what, 2 and a half inches? They're 2 and a half inches wide. Okay, so I'm supposed to, no, not yet. I don't I have, oh, yes, I do. I put this on first. Yeah, and you line it up. No, no you line I line it up, up with against the, the draw line. With line the drawn line. Okay. 
and it's got to go right to the edge. And if a little bit goes over the edge, you don't have to worry, right? Because yeah. that'll get cut off later. Yeah. Okay, I've got it lined up here along that line. And now So what you're doing is you're adhering your interface interfacing to your button band. But I have a piece here that didn't get any on it. What do yeah. I do now? So now you add a piece of uh, another piece of. Uh, I asked you to cut four, which is probably too much. But anyway, um, then you just lay a piece, up. butt it up against the other piece. Okay, now you're crooked. Well, I was going to straighten it, but I think you're a little crooked. I think you're out. I'm not sure. Wait, wait, wait. Let's see. I had that problem last time too. Mm -hmm. It happens when you're when you're. Let's take a look at measure that piece just to make sure. What this? Yeah, get your little ruler out and and uh, just check, just check the end there. That's what she said. Wait. Yeah, you're I just out by a hair. It's just a hair. Just a hair. Just a bunny. Okay. You see a real faint one there. Yeah. Okay. Does that look good so, to you? Yeah, you can just, it can overlap a tiny bit, but it, it's better if it doesn't overlap a lot. So, okay. So we're good. I probably just, you just stuck it to your, your wall mat. Your yeah. mat, Oh, no, I didn't. Oh, that's not too bad. No, that's okay. Okay, so. Okay, you want to maybe trim a little bit. You don't have to trim it too close, it'll get cut off later on. Okay. Okay, so now you have to fold over this against the uh, the uh, interfacing, interfacing. Uh, against the line of the interfacing. Okay. We are at three eighths of an inch. This shirt's a three eighths of an inch seam allowance, so that's why we're using three eighths of an inch. Just finger press it first and then iron it down. You just want it to be all ironed down so that it's easier for the next step. Okay, so next step is to fold this up so it's in line with... After you put steam -a -seam. Oh, After steam -a -seam, yes. This so is... we're using a product called steam -a -seam, and it helps with us to glue the button band down for sewing. Um, you can do it without this, Professionals probably don't use this, but we're not professionals, so we're using this as a an aid to making this a little easier um, on on you to uh, to sew it down so the button band doesn't move when it when you're sewing it. So we're using this product called Steam Seam Light, and it's a quarter of an inch. That's what it is. Steam seam light, it's a quarter of an inch. You can buy it at any good sewing store. Okay, let it have a second to cool down a little bit. And it's a, basically a glue on one side, you uh, a glue a glue on both sides actually. And you're sticking it down with the iron, and then you have to peel a backing off to expose the glue the other side of the glue.
I'm just using this pin to hold it down as I pull it off so that I don't get my fingers all sticky. Yeah, because it is sticky. Okay, okay so now what we're going to do is fold this, uh, see the, the uh, interfacing, fold this piece over so that it's on top of itself. And just push that piece where the glue is on to the other side of the interfacing and stick it down. Remember to uh, uh, flatten the edges out as you're sticking it down. Why? Well, it's, so you don't get a bulge? Yeah. Because nobody wants a bulge in their shirt. No. What? Okay, go ahead. Make me nervous. Steam a seam light is also repositionable, so. Okay, so now I. Yeah. Steaming up my glasses here. Yeah. Okay, so now you have your button band sorted on. Now you have to uh, go to the sewing machine, which you'll have to move your camera, of yep. course, and uh, sewing machine, and you're going to have to sew down each edge of your uh, button band so that it's held down properly. Okay, so we're just going to... In a nice straight line. Oh, yeah, well, that might be the tricky part. No, that's not tricky. Okay, we're, we're going to just cut for a second so we can move the camera. Okay, so we've got the camera repositioned here so you can see the sewing machine. But we want to first of all talk about the setup here. So what foot are we using? We're using the F foot on the Janome. And we are actually going to be this is the foot we're using yeah and we're actually going to use the here come here we're actually uh setting up the machine to sew about uh one eighth of an inch on the edge of the uh button band and we're using actually the inside of this this little foot on the inside as a guide i don't know if you can see that there there's there's a on this foot there's a uh there's a little prong here for a little part of the foot there. And it's, uh, we're sewing right on the edge of that foot. So, and we're using it as a guide. Okay, so to, to make it so that you're sewing straight all the way down your mm -hmm. shirt. Yeah, that's the theory. Okay, and... Um, and your machine is set right now at 7.4 for the needle position. And... Uh, so the needle is over here. We, we've already taken a test sample of fabric and put it under to get the right positioning. So on my machine, the Janome M7, we're set with the needle position in 7.4 and our stitch length is 2.4, which yeah. is the default for this particular setup. And guess what you said you use? Yeah. So you use basically the default of your machine. Um, okay. I don't think we need anything else to say about yeah. this. No, I think you should turn your shirt the other way around because you were, you were saying we're using the bobbin thread's going to end up at the front of the shirt. Uh, so it's important to have your bobbin thread the same color as the uh, top thread. Okay, and I'm sewing again from this side over. Yes. So where's the stiletto? Oh. What'd you do with my stiletto? Here. Okay, so difficult for you to see. I'll just pull it up here for a second. Right here on the inside. This is my, I'm just going to go a little bit, the way this is set up, I'm going in just a little bit from that edge. Words fail me. That's going, okay. I have my machine set, and I'm, I have my machine set for, um, at a relatively slow pace, because I don't trust myself. Okay, here we go. If you uh, want to cut it out for a minute and then we can. Yeah, we can probably uh, just stop this because you don't need to see me sew all the way down a straight line because I'm sure everybody is familiar with sewing down a straight line. So that's what we'll do. Okay. 
Okay. Okay, so I've stitched the one side down. Now I'm just doing the same thing on the other side of this strip right here. And I did speed up my machine a little bit. I'm getting a bit cocky. And you know what happens when you get a bit cocky? You screw up. At least I do. And I'm trying very hard not to screw up. So I asked Walter if when we get to the end, should I lock my stitch, you know, reverse or whatever. And what was your answer? Uh, I said you should, but sometimes I forget. Okay. And you're, this is the bottom of the shirt. You'll end up uh, flipping it and sewing over it anyway. So, And I just used my automatic lock button on my sewing machine for that. Okay, so it's all stitched up here. And let's take a look at the other side. Now, it's, you won't be able to see it on camera. But but I, yeah, that thread looks nice. I think I did pretty good. Yeah. Looks pretty. What do you think? Yeah, looks what good. Think so? Okay, so what are we doing next? I think I was going to do the pocket next, right? But I think the pockets, pocket it will oh, take no, no. an entire session. Okay. Okay, so we're going to start with the back, and uh, I'll show you how to prepare the back. Okay. Okay, so what's next? The back. You the need back. to get the back piece. We, this is the front piece. We need to get the back piece. And that would be? The next piece. So. This piece. Yeah. So do so, you take the pattern off it? Uh, yeah, just make sure that your notches are cut here. So they're cut. Yep. Yeah. Okay. okay, so what we're going to do is take the back piece. Okay, we're well, pinning the pattern. Oops, one more. Okay, now what? We have now, two back pieces. Yeah, no, we have one back piece because that's remember, right. we right. cut yeah. this on the folds. That's so right. we have one big back massive piece. piece. One big piece. Yeah, big massive piece. Okay. Right? So you'll notice that we'll have notches at the top here. And this is to put. Here, I, I can switch the there. Hang so on. I can show that. Here you go. If you go. At the camera, we have notches at the top on the back, right? And this puts a little bit of a fold in the back so that uh, um, you, uh, uh, it's to make it. Um, it's a pleat, isn't it? It's a pleat, yeah. And the reason is that you're not, your uh, yolks are smaller than the back. <laughs> so, oh, so no yeah, no, it's also to make it, uh, to make, usually the shoulders and the body are, uh, the body's bigger than the shoulders, so. Um, they, uh, you, you need a little bit of, a um, pleat in the back for, uh, for most shirts have this in the back. You can look at the back of your shirt. Um, there's a pleat here in the back on either side. And that's what those new notches are to do the pleat. So what we'll need to do is we'll need to fold this, the two holes together. Okay. You might want to show this up close and personal. You want to do the two holes together, right? And then flip the fabric over so that the fold is facing the outer edge of the uh, armhole area of the shirt. Okay. And this is actually kind of hard. Give me a, a pin. Pin or a clip? Pin. Why not a clip? Because a clip is harder. Okay. to do. It won't hold it in place. Oh. Okay, now what I want you to do is go to the machine and baste that fold over. Okay, so when and I... And you'll use about a three inch uh, three inch um, a 3.0 uh, th stitch length, yeah. And be careful this fold doesn't unfold when you're doing that. Okay. So I'm going to take this over to the machine. I usually do both at once, but we'll get, do one I'll at a time. We'll do one at a time right now. Okay. I'm over at machine. I'm holding my fold. I'm going to change the stitch length to three. Oops. And uh, don't um, move your needle back to the middle. Okay. All right. And, and sew I'm, a quarter of an inch from the edge. 
approximately. And how you do that is you fold, you sew to at the ins that inside part of that foot again. Okay, where the line is, or the ins oh the inside. Where where the where this little like you did last time. Okay, but that's that, a quarter, that's, quarter of an inch. That isn't a quarter of an inch. That's about a quarter of an inch. Quarter um, of an inch is where that line is. No, it isn't. Oh, okay, so you want me to go here? Yeah, it's just to hold it down so oh, it doesn't. Because we move the needle over, that's yeah, why it's yeah. different. Oh, okay, so where do I start from? Uh, a little bit at, further back, a little bit. Oh, but no, 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 back the other way. Okay, there, and just sew right across there. Okay, how Because what will happen is that when we put the yoke on, we're sewing at three eighths of an inch, so it'll encase that, so you don't care. It's just to hold it down. Okay. Just on the inside of that thing. On the inside of this, like what I did before. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I have a question. You're saying this is a quarter of an inch, but then we have a three eighths of a inch that goes in. Oh, that. So it'll just be an eighth more, yeah. and that will encase what you meant. You you will yeah, that will, the basting yeah. thread, so we don't have to worry about it. Okay. I'll slow it down a bit. Is that far enough? Yeah. It's just hold it down. Uh, tie it off? No. And don't sew over the top of your pins. Well, it's okay. You can't actually. Oh, well, no. <laughs> You're not supposed to. You're playing Russian roulette. Okay, so that one is done. Should I leave the pin in? Uh, you can right now for now. But... Okay, so there's another one though, right? Or you can take the pin out too, it doesn't matter. Okay, so there's another one of these. Well, there's, okay, these two, right? Yeah, now you have to do the same thing. So I match up the notches. Yeah. Okay, and then I fold, oops. A little awkward. It's a pain in the butt. It is a pain in the butt. Because I get the notches screwed up all the time. Yeah, <laughs> like what I'm doing. I'm screwing up the notches. Here, come here. Yeah. All Actually, right. let's do it on a flat surface. Yeah, it's easier. Move the camera over here. Okay. So. I've got my two notches here. So I fold this one over so it lines up with that one. Mm -hmm. It's a bitch. Okay, I'm trying to get this line. Okay. Okay, I got those lined up. Yeah. Oh. And pull this flap back over. Yeah. Keeping that in. No, now you've got it wrong because now your fold is facing inside. Oh, I got it. You fold want your the other fold way. to face the outside. So if I do it this way. Yeah. Is this on camera? Yeah, it is. Okay. Mother. Okay. Okay. Put a pin in. Yeah, put a pin. I I usually put it facing up. Yeah, like no, no, the other way. Yeah, so that the the needle part's sticking out. Okay. And now take it over and sew that like we sewed the other one. Okay. Yeah. Oh, flip the camera. Okay. Okay, hang on. Let's see what you did here. What did I do? Uh oh. It, you didn't. That's okay, but. Uh, no, it's all right, actually. It's all right. Yeah, it's all right. I didn't think you sold over oh, far enough. Okay. <laughs> Saved. Okay, so I've done the darts. Okay, we're on the darts. 
So I had two nice little pleats. I'm not making okay, a skirt. Okay, so now time. we're going to take a piece, the pieces that we have these two yokes that we uh, have here for the back of the shirt. You're yoking. You're yoking, yeah. Uh, puns, people, puns. And what we're going to do, and this is where we need clips. Clips, we have clips. Well, we can do pins too. It's whatever you're used to. Well, personally, but not having ever done this before, I like clips for everything, but. Okay, so I think you just... have to put a yoke, one yoke on facing uh, the, what do you call it? Front, uh, what do you call that? Front facing, front sides. The, the right side. Right sides together. Yeah, right. Right, so together. you've got the back of your fa shirt facing up, you know, the right side facing up, and the yoke facing um uh, right side of the oak facing down on top of the right side. Of the okay, that was complicated. Yeah. What I think, let me try. What you mean is we're putting right sides together and the cutout here, that's the neck hole. Yeah, is going, facing down. Is going towards your body. Yeah, because what will end up happening is that when you sew it, you'll flip it up and it'll become the top part of the shirt. So what I need you to do is to now, these edges should match, right? They should match, because if you put the pleat in the right way, <laughs> way it should. Well, we'll see, won't we? Okay. Very good. Yeah, well, this is something like we do in quilting, too. It might be a little off. I might matter. have to ease it. But but if not, we'll just chop it off. And <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, you can do that? <laughs> mm, you'll do that in quilting. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty good, I think. What do you think? Yeah, that's think pretty good. good. Yeah, okay. Now, now a three-eighths. Okay, now we have two yokes. Oh. There is the front yoke and the back yoke. This is the back yoke. Okay. Right? And now what we want to do is flip this all around. You mean the other side? It? Yeah. Okay, so now we're putting the bad, the wrong side up. Right. Wrong side up. Now we take your other yoke, right, and have it the the and you put the so the wrong sides. Will no, no, the wrong sides don't go together here. Now the the uh, wrong side of the shirt, the wrong side of the back faces up, and the right side of your yoke faces down. So it's right side to wrong side. Okay. That's a little confusing, but I get it. And I assume that what we're going to do is just, just reclip it. So reclip it so that, so that now you have the two, two pieces. pieces. And make sure all three pieces line up. Yeah, I had a feeling you were going to say that. Fiddly, fiddly, fiddly dee. Well, not hard. No. It's just. Actually, you got those pole, fle uh, pleats in really good because the first few times I did a shirt, uh, it took me how, half an hour to put those pleats in. Well, because it kept they kept uh, releasing. I wasn't putting the pin in. And they kept releasing and uh, and uh, well, unfolding on me. When I first started quilting, I had a lot of pleats in things. You're not supposed to. You know, like when you're going to quilt it. Mm -hmm. Get a little pleaty thing in there. Don't worry if it doesn't exactly line up. Well, I'm picky. Yeah, we'll, we'll fix that. Okay, so... Okay, so now what I'm going to get you to do is go to the sewing machine uh -huh. and sew that down at three-eighths of an inch. Okay. And so how we're going to do that yeah. is now your needle's in the middle position on that foot, right? Uh-huh. And I want you to sew to the outer edge of that foot. You know the okay, way you would... Let's go over to here. 
So we're, we're using the little features of the foot for different seams. Uh -huh. Okay, so my needle's in the middle position right so now. So now you're going to sew right along the edge like you would do in quilting, right? You do, you sew across. When you're using your uh, quarter inch yeah. foot, you sew along the edge. That's uh -huh. what I want you to do with this foot. Okay, I should be able to do that. Am I lined up properly? Don't worry. But I do worry. In quilting, we have to be very exact. Or if we're out even by an eighth of an inch, it can multiply over. Yeah. So, I mean, that's just the way it is. Okay. No, that's not the flow. All right. There we go. Okay. Let us do this, shall we? Backstitch when you do this. You didn't tell me that before. Okay. Okay. I've backstitched. Now, what's happening here? That's just a little jaggy. That could be that okay. for you. Now, we're sewing at three eighths of an inch seam. That's. Yes, it is. Looks like a quarter to me. No, it's three eighths. That is a quarter? Oh, no, no. Sorry. Shirt math. I forgot. Quarter is less than three eighths. So, yeah. As quilters, we don't, we don't deal. We try to avoid eighths of an inch. At least I do. For good reason. Everybody sing. Sing the three-eighths song. Oh my goodness, I like quarter inch, but now I'm doing three-eighths of an inch. It's You're lucky it's not five-eighths. Five You're damn right. Five-eighths is pain because a lot of garments are five-eighths. Why? I don't know. Room for expansion? I don't know. Now backstitch. Okay, and front stitch right off the end. Okay. Okay, so I have yolks. You have yolks. Now you have to press those. Oh, and which, how, like, what do you mean press? Okay, hang on. Let's go over back here. Back here, you can swing the camera. Swing the camera around. Here we go. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to press this yoke up. Okay. Right? Yeah. This yoke up from the from that side, and this yoke, both yokes go up. Oh, so that encloses the seam. Yeah, but we're not going to do that yet because I'm going to have you grade the seams. Oh, God. That's okay. I give it a B. B plus. <laughs> but it's better to to uh, to what do you say? Press it. Okay. I don't think they need to see. No, you I'm press not going to put that on camera because everybody knows how to press. Okay, so I've got them pressed, and that was pretty easy to do because it's very much like pressing. Well, exactly the same as pressing for quilt pieces. So, so yeah. now what we've got in between here is we have a seam that is three layers of fabric, right? Three layers of fabric. Right. Oh yes, okay, so in this seam, yeah. Yeah, we had, so yeah. what I'm gonna ask you to do is take your handy dandy, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, what, my uh, <laughs> applique, your applique scissors? Oh, my applique scissors, oh, okay. I have to get them. Uh, here they are, all right, applique scissors. Try and cut this seam down to about an eighth of an inch all the way across. On both pieces? On uh, one piece and then leave the next piece. So that one didn't, that one got a little bit shifted. Anyway, what? we're okay, I guess. Is it captured in it? Yeah, it should be. Yeah, it's caught in it, so okay. we're okay. So uh, just cut this down to maybe about one eighth and then the next one down to about a quarter so that you have a, a grating, right? 
And what you want to do is you want the longest uh, seam to be on the outside. So okay, you don't, you don't touch this. I'm now confused. So let me rerun this bit. I have two seams here. I have three. Three. So this one is there. The, what, what you're trying to do is make it so that the back of your shirt's not bulky. Okay. So am I cutting that one? No, you're not. Okay. The long one at the end, you don't cut. So let's call that seam number one because it's closest to yeah. the this one, the back yeah. piece. Okay. So number two is in the middle. Number three is the one closest to me. Yeah. So you cut this one the shortest. Which one? Number three or two? Uh, the first one. No. Number three or two? <laughs> number three. Okay. And then uh, the uh, one underneath it is the number second two. shortest. Okay. So this one's shorter. Than this one. Okay, so this one's going to be an eighth of an inch. Yeah, or about that, whatever you can do. I never, it's just, it's a pain in the butt. Okay. And don't cut into the stitch line. No, well, I would assume that. You wouldn't. Doesn't that be an eighth? It can be a little bigger or whatever. Just okay. I have a suggestion. You know another way you could do this. What rotary cutter? Well, what you could do is pull those back, and then use a ruler. I don't know if it's any easier. No. Okay, back. I just sit down and cut cut it on my lap. Okay. Now you don't have to do this. You just end up with a bulkier seam. Okay, did you do well, I think your, I flipped you, it. You, you flipped it? I flipped it. You might want to do this off camera because it may take a while. Well, let me just see if I can do here. <laughs> I don't think I, I do it on my lap. Yeah, we'll do this off camera. Okay, so I did the graduated seam, and I'm going to tell you this, that was a bitch. And it does work better if you hold it in your lap. You get a little better angle on it. Now, okay. you may notice that our yokes are a little bit out of alignment at the top here. Not my fault. That's okay. Uh, that happens sometimes when you're doing this. And we'll just adjust it <laughs> when it comes to sew on the collar. So, and we're a little bit out here. Um, and that's like a bloody dress that could, yeah, I know it's, it's big, <laughs> and then uh, what it looks like a moo moo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, what we're going to do next is uh, the seam is folded up inside here, so uh, we're going to go back to the machine and top stitch a quarter of an inch all the way down the back here, um, so that it holds those two pieces in place. Okay, so it's a quarter inch from this seam part it's running yeah, across yeah and there. it's it's the part that goes to the upper part to the yoke that you because when you feel underneath you feel the seam underneath mm -hmm. there and that's what you're trying to uh to stitch down okay so if i was to do this would this cause us grief no because I, I, I usually kind of pull the fabric when i'm uh when i'm stitching to make sure yeah. it's it's um because i'm a clippy person and I just feel more secure when things are clipped. I have a theory. You can never have too many clips. Okay. So we're going to go a quarter inch. Now, set up on the sewing machine. Let's move this over here. Yeah. So what you'll do is you have your needle in the middle. Yep. My needle is in the middle. Okay, and then you do like you did the bind. Uh, you did the front of the shirt, and you uh, so. So I'm going to line it up along this edge, right? Yeah. Okay, and I'm going to line it up with the outside. The inside of the, the foot. inside because the outside of the foot's three eighths. Remember? Okay, the inside, the inside, is inside of, of that little piece there it's a is quarter. a quarter. Okay, let's put my needle down. Slide this up. And here goes nothing. Now I would assume you would not want to force this under your foot because you'd get a bulge in it. You try not to do and try and make let, sure let the 
yeah. feed dogs do what the feed dogs do. Who let the feed dogs out? Woof, 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 woof. Okay, we're moving along here. This is no yoke. Yes, I'm slow. I'm sewing slowly, but yeah, because it's the first time I'm doing this, so I'm trying to stay as accurate as I possibly can. Okay, now do I back stitch? Yeah, a sec for a bit. Yeah, and then front stitch off. Yeah, and front stitch off. Okay. Swing this around. Okay, teacher, how's that? That's good. We're a little off here. So what we're going to do is take your scissors. Give me your scissors. No, the little ones. You're the ones that you were using for uh, oh, the Oh, you mean the applique scissors. Yeah. Well, let's use proper terminology, shall we? We're a little off here. So we'll just fix that. This is in the, the armhole, so we'll just take that little edge off and round it a bit. So we got a new armhole now. <laughs> okay. Well, it was only off by a, yeah, a hair. A hair. But, so, yeah, okay. it'll be fine. So, I guess I can take my clips off now, right? Yeah. Okay. So, what's that? What about this part? That's your neckline. Yeah. We'll I worry about that later. Okay. All right. Now what? Now, um, I think we should stop for the day. Okay. That sounds good to me. Okay. And then uh, next will be, actually, next class, we'll, we should be... Uh, looking at doing the pocket and that may be just one day there in itself so uh, because it it does take a little bit of time and you're going to, to show me how to make it invisible right yeah yeah so now see what will happen is now it's looking more like a shirt you have a yoke on the back right on the back that comes like up a dress. and then when you yeah it does and when you uh have if you look at the inside of a shirt you'll have a yoke on the inside of your shirt too yeah, okay so okay at the back but I still think it's just a cute little outfit. You know, there you go. The armholes in it. Just, you only have to put arms in it. It can be, yeah. But well, what, what, is, what is a dress? A dress is a shirt yeah, with, basically, a, with a skirt. Right? It looks exactly like a dress. And with a little cute little belt, why, you could go anywhere with, with the right shoes. Okay. okay so then uh, uh, what, what would be the next steps anyway is, uh, is the pocket, what we're doing, right? Because the pocket has to go on the left-hand side of the front, right? And then after the pocket gets done, we'll have to attach the fronts to, to this piece, right? So the left and the right mm -hmm. fronts to this piece. And then we make, during that process, we make something called a burrito. Ooh, ooh, I love burritos. And uh, then after that, uh, it'll be sleeves. God, it looks huge. Yeah. I guess it'll quilt out whatever well we'll see okay so that's today and uh we have had some comments about last week's and they were very complimentary uh many of the people thought you were a very good teacher and they were surprised that i was actually a good student i can be if i want to be okay so hope you got something out of that today hope we didn't confuse you too much i don't think i'm too confused i get it i see what we're doing Will I remember it? No, that's why you have a pattern. If I make 12 more of them, I'll probably have it down pat. But anyway, so far, so good. So from that, we'll see you next week. Bye, everybody. Bye.